Welcome back, this is Yamajack, and today we got Elysium Suicidal Gunslinger. <sighs> I just recorded this twice. The first time my mute key was not working and I didn't notice until it was too late, and I was like, eh, whatever, I'll just like re-record it. I was 10 minutes in or something, so I just decided to go for a re-recording. And then the last one I got right up until the end, it was like 20 minutes in, and uh, my disc is over, is, uh, is full. So... Rip. <laughs> that one's gone too. <sighs> one's oh well. So I cleared up another 200 megs or 200 uh, gigs. <laughs> Not 200 megs. Um, 200 gigs on the uh, on the drive and should be good for a bit. But I tell you what I'm gonna do. All right, I tell you what I'm gonna do. It's a simple thing that I'm gonna do. All right, I'm throwing together a Naz now because this is really frustrating and I don't like it. So I'm just gonna throw together a Naz and then I don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Um, I have to figure out a way to do it cheaply, but yeah, you can typically buy stuff on like uh, Amazon or whatever. I've wanted to have a Naz for a while, and whatever. I have a bit of savings, I will just invest it into a Naz. I think that's a fair thing to do. Uh, it also increases my electrical bill, so I'll have to pay a little bit more on that, but it doesn't really matter. Anyway, uh, I've, I've had to talk about chess for like three episodes in a row now. For you guys, it's... or I guess four. For you guys, it's two. For me, it's three. Uh, or four. For you guys, it's two. For me, it's four, I guess. Anyway. I'm playing chess. Lots and lots of chests, as you guys are uh, probably aware. I'm really enjoying it. I'm having a, I'm having a blast with the chess. I uh, bought a chess board as well. I don't know. I don't know if my family's really going to be wanting to play it, and who else are you going to play with uh, these days, right? But I bought. Uh, it is a chess checkers backgammon plastic thing. It's fine, you know. It's not a great board or anything. Like, there's nothing exceptional about it but it doesn't have to be you know at the end of the day as, as long as the the pieces are identifiable as what they are you, you can play on anything you, you can play on a you know on a on a slate floor as long as the slates are different colors right like you don't you know you don't really it's it's just that the mechanics are the same right it's not like anything's not gonna work with it it's not like you're not gonna be playing chess um, it's not a good place to be, but I wanted to see if I could be there. And you kind of can. You can kind of get yourself stuck in there, which is, like, super bad. Don't do that. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Um, so I don't know if my family's going to be into it. I'm sure my mother will be. For probably a couple of games, at least. I will beat her every time we play, probably. My understanding is that she didn't play chess growing up very much. Um, she definitely has not played chess for a while, and, uh, it's, uh, you know, don't do it, and, uh, so I'd probably win every time we play. I think I'm, I think I'm at the point, I, I, I feel like it's not hard to have a like 90% success rate against the uh, beginner chess player, right? Like like brand new first time playing in like eight years and even when you played, you played like two games against your sister because you had a chess set at home and happened to want to play for that one day. You know, like, like that kind of beginner, right? Like first time players kind of. Uh, I, I feel like it's not hard to be at a point where you have like a 90% win rate against them. Perhaps even like a hundred percent, but um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little bit more lenient there and say like ninety percent. So, you know, I don't know I don't know how fun it would be for her to continue playing chess against me, and I don't know how fun it would be for me to continue playing chess against her. But if she has fun with it, then I can maybe start to teach is a bit of a strong word, but uh, share some of what I've learned. And uh, we can kind of get better as chess players together. 
perhaps other family members might join in and have fun with it or something. I don't know. Um, but really what I wanted to have a chess board for was so that I can be better at learning chess. Because I think, for me, I have an easier time physically with that kind of stuff, right? Like learning the chess notation and learning tactics and all this. I, I have a better time if, if I physically have a, a game board to start moving pieces around on. Um, and then it also has backgammon and checkers on it, uh, which are both games that my family would probably enjoy more than chess. Um, so, you know, it's, it's whatever, right? It's whatever. Ultimately, it adds three more games to my repertoire. It's like 20 bucks. I don't care. You know, it adds three more games to my board game repertoire, which is uh, is fair. You know, one good game and two games. <laughs> checkers is checkers is fun, I guess. But like, if I'm, if I'm ever if I'm ever in a mood where I would be playing checkers, I'd rather just play chess. It's it's, it's just to me, it's just the objectively superior version of checkers. Checkers, checkers feels like kids' chess to me. Which isn't to say that it's not enjoyable, but uh, I'm more of a more of a chess girl myself. So. I'm really tired. I'm yawning a lot. Let's get these books and. Uh, I think there's one right over here, then there's one over there and one up there. Yes, 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 yes. I remember where they are. Bonk. Uh, and we'll pull the lever. Maybe it gives us... See ya, dude. Maybe it gives us what we want. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. What did we just get? Nothing, because we couldn't pick it up. I'm like, what, did, what the heck? Um... I don't know. I, I, I bought the chess set. If nothing else, it adds to the collection of games. Best best case scenario is uh, I end up getting my family into chess. Worst case scenario is I have a chess board. They're both pretty good. They are both pretty good. Let's shoot that. They're both pretty good. So, I don't really mind. But I've, uh, I've I've slowly been rising in the rankings, the ratings of uh, chess. I'm at 570 right now. Again, I, I suspect I'm going to continue rising until about 700, maybe 800-ish. I don't think I'm better than that because I still occasionally leave my queen hanging. I notice it like immediately, right? So I just have to like slow down a little bit and think things through just a little bit more. But I feel I feel like I'm. Uh, Better, better than 600 anyway. And I'm, I'm pretty confident in saying that I'm better than 600 because... Oh my good god. I feel, I'm pretty confident in saying that I'm better than 600 just because, honestly, like when I'm playing against these, you know, 550, 600 ra uh, rating players, it, it almost feels like smurfing, you know? Like, like, very few of them are actually putting up much of a challenge. Most of the challenge comes from me making mistakes and then being like, ah, crud, how do I recover from this? And then recovering from it, you know? I, I tend to win at this at this level, which is um, goodish, I guess. It's it's okay, you know. It's fine. No, it's not great because because I, I like I like I like losing I don't I don't get to learn much when I win right yeah you, you learn something you learn something it's especially at this rating I, I am definitely learning when I win because I'm still making mistakes the opponent is just making mistakes in response to that you know like oftentimes I'll leave my queen hanging and then they won't take it and I'll be like oh <laughs> okay <laughs> sure uh, yeah. that works. I'm impressed by your it's not. It's not even like a what is it? It's a Bozet Gambit, whatever. Oh no, my queen! Oh no, my queen! My beautiful queen! Um, you know, it's, it's not. It's not like that. It's just literally, genuinely, 
like just sticking my queen. Uh, the knights, man. The knights just. I I, I stick my queen right into the the knight's attack range so often, and then so often people don't take it, and I'm like, there is I. I'm not going for a gambit here. I'm not going for anything sneaky here. I just genuinely didn't even think about that in the moment. You should have just taken the queen. But maybe that's kind of what happens, right? Is people see it and they're like, "Well, there's no way they just give me that." So I'll have to. I'll, I'm not. I don't. I don't. You know. I, I feel. I feel like I'm kind of at the, the the rating here, where people look at it and they go. There's no way they just give me that. That must be a trap. I can't see what it is, but but that that has to be a trap, you know. It's like I don't know if you can't see the trap, fall for it. Okay. If you if you can't figure out what the trap is, hop in. You'll learn what the trap is. And if there, <laughs> chances are, it's not a it's a mistake. If you, if you can't see the trap, chances are there isn't a trap, right? I'm feeling generous. Um, and if there is, then you're going to learn what it is, and you'll know for next time. Both are good situations. There is no losing situation there. I mean, you might lose the game itself if it is a trap, but that's good, you know? That's that's a good thing. You want that. You want to lose so that you can learn how to not do that. Um, anyway, I, uh, I typically start with E4. King's Pawn. I, uh, I start with A4. In one of my games, I started with E3 on accident. It was it was a misclick, and I was so mad at myself because I was like, oh god. It is it is an opening. It's like fonts something or other, which is like okay, I guess. Sure, we can we can play this. <laughs> sure. Um. But, uh, I was like, damn, because, uh, you know, at that point you can push d5, and, or you can push e5, you can push, you know, whatever you want, because I'm not actually protecting pretty much anything. The bishop, the dark squared bishop, I believe, is open at that point, but that's not important. The, the, that, that bishop would have been open if I pushed e4 anyway. I mean, I guess at that point you'd have access to push the the light squared bishop later as well but um, basically what ends up happening when you push e3 is you go oopsies I don't know maybe, maybe there's a good opening that comes off of that but I'd be surprised if, uh, if e3 is ever you know used in in the high level chess I'd be really surprised it feels like it's just a bad play you know you're not you're not you're leaving that open or you're, you're leaving that center just wide open to be taken you know, with e4, with d4, if you go, you know, even c4 or something like that, like you're taking at least part of the the center. With with e3, you're just you're let you're letting them, you're you're giving them the keys to the kingdom at that point, and uh, it's not a good play. Anyway, I played e3, and I was just like, yeah, I kind of give up, but I'm not going to resign turn one, right? Like, no, I'll just oh, I should have put the tomes in, and then. Or, yeah, I didn't even put the tomes in. We're going to put the tomes in this time. <laughs> promise you that. Well, I'll promise it to you, but I'm not going to promise I'll actually follow through on that promise. I don't know if there's anything behind me, but I'm tossing that. There was nothing behind you. Um, anyway, I went on a super aggressive attack after that. Because I was like, you know what? I I messed up. Let's just open the game wide open. So I started uh, giving up pieces left and right, opening the game just wide open, got my queen out, and started like threatening mate. I uh, had to like force them to move around and then I started to get to like take their bishops and rooks and knights and pawns and I went from like being like three pawns down in a piece to like mate in a minute <laughs> it, it, it was literally my clock i i spent a minute nine and uh it was it was a hyper aggressive game with like 73 percent accuracy or something like that and uh yeah i just i just destroyed it was it was 
one of my favorite games. It is definitely the game that I'm the most proud of. I can't remember exactly how it went, but I, I ended up making the mistake, getting really mad at myself, kind of giving up and not really caring how it goes, just really capitalizing on just full aggression, getting all of my stuff developed, pushing all of their pieces. Because if you sacrifice pawn for pawn, right? In the, in the early game, you move your pawn out, and then they take your pawn, you get to develop a piece. They might take another pawn or something, right? You get to develop another piece. They haven't developed anything. All you have, you have your pieces out. They've only moved the pawn like a bunch of times. Now you get to take their pawn back, and uh, you have your pieces out, and they haven't done anything. They're like a couple of pawns up, but positionally they're down a lot, which is uh, debatably more important. So it's uh, oh wait, let's let's go put these in. So it's, 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 yeah. Anyway, it, it was a match that I was really, really proud of. I will leave the link to the match in the description below if you want to go over the match and, and see how it went. I definitely made some mistakes along the way. Um, you know, going over the analysis, I was able to see, like, oh yeah, I should have taken here. Um, I should have done this, I should have done that, you know, like. But, uh... You know, to, to have just kind of given up on the game and push this, like, hyper-aggressive play. And for it to have just worked like that was, uh, really, really, really satisfying. So I will, uh, I'll try to leave the link to the analysis or to the match, uh, in the description if you want to look at it and see how it went. Um, but it's, it's, it's definitely the match that I am presently the most proud of, for sure. I feel I feel like I did really really good for for playing so aggressively at uh, at my rating. Who is this mysterious marksman? And I and I don't know. It was it was it was fun, you know, to have just been on the attack the whole time like that. I think that uh, you 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 could easily shut that down. Um, like I definitely there was a blunder, I believe. Uh, I was ahead the whole time, but I, I think we were pretty even at one point because I made a big, pretty big mistake. Uh, they just didn't capitalize on that. And then I got to continue being on the attack and really pushing it. But, you know, outside of that, there was there was really not an awful lot that they could have done. Um, which was just incredibly satisfying. So, so, so satisfying. It, may, it makes me want to kind of play more games like that, you know? Like, more games where I'm just hyper-aggressive like that. But I don't. I, I feel like it's not a good thing to be doing when you're still learning kind of like the basics of chess, you know? Like, once you understand sort of the, the basics, you, you can start to do some of that kind of funny stuff, right? Be like, yeah, we're going to play an aggressive game. I understand how to do this. I understand how it can be countered. I understand, you know, where to go if it gets countered. But kind of... <sighs> I'm tired. It's a lot of talking, a lot of... Let's play today. Um, but... Kind of... Uh, when, when I'm still learning how to play chess and kind of learning the basic mechanics and... Well, not really the basic mechanics, but... The fundamental ideas and concepts and... All of this, you know, when I'm still learning all of that, I feel like I don't want to be, like, learning bad habits, being too aggressive, sacrificing pieces when I don't need to, and, you know, maybe, maybe it's fine. Maybe it's, the gambits are, are a real strategy, right? Um, but I, I, I feel like just kind of going into it without having a plan a ahead of time and just kind of... Being like, yeah, I'm going to play hyper-aggressive. It, it probably teaches me more bad habits than good. Is my guess. Which I, which I don't want, right? Like, I want to learn good habits. Of course I want to learn good habits, you know? Why, why would you want to learn bad habits? Um, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm at right now. But... I have been learning a few openings, very brief, just kind of like, you know, 
couple of moves in and then um, a little bit of the sort of theory of how to take it from there kind of stuff, you know? Um, I've been learning a few cheeky mates, some gambits. You know, the scholar's mate is, is not something that works on me. It worked once. It worked once. It doesn't work again. You know they they get their they they get their bishop out there. You move your knight, right? You, you move you move your knight. Now they can't put their their queen in the in the attacking position there, because you just take it. And uh, you can you can even punish it even farther if uh, if they really try and go in on it. But it's uh, it's not it's not necessarily. You're charging me. I'm a charge in my flesh pound. Uh, it's not necessarily like uh, a strategy. I mean, the scholar's mate is not something you'll see pretty much anybody doing past like 800 rating, really. Because once once you know what it is and that it will definitely not work, it really just lets people start developing their pieces, and you just have to push your queen back anyway. So you're just, you're just wasting turns, and uh, they get to develop pieces that they would want to anyway. You know, knight to c6 is, is a move that you want. That's where you want your knight. So if, if somebody's trying to, you know, push their, uh, their queen up to, to go for a scholar's mate or something like that, like... Oh well. <laughs> oh well. You just get to, to knight to c6. It's what you want to do anyway. They have to push their queen back. Now you get to develop another piece to defend against it. Because they still have the... Um, what is that? That's the... Uh, the F rank or whatever. They still attack on that or whatever. You know, you got you got lots of... Um, if they really try to go at it and, and really make that scholar's mate work, you got a lot of options to, to, to punish it. And anybody who knows how hard it can be countered, and that anybody playing at that rating is going to just counter it, they ain't going to play it. You ain't going to do it, right? And that's that's why um, it looks different. It looks more red. Is that because we pulled the thing? Um, or is it always red? I don't know. Oh, that was not the right way, dude. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Where is he? There he is. Um, yeah, you're not, you're not gonna make that move because it's just stupid. So it does, it doesn't work on me anymore, and I don't do it too much. I do it sometimes. Again, I'm only playing against like 500 ELO players here. They're not that great. Typically they defend against it, but they're not able to fully counter it. You know, they they can they definitely end up uh, making moves that prevent it from happening, but they don't counter it, you know. They they defend, but but that's not a, that's not the same as countering it. If somebody plays um If somebody plays uh, the scholars made against me, they're losing their queen or their bishop, like almost 100%. Or they're going to retreat it, and I'm just going to get some free development. Um, but typically, at this rating, when you play the uh, the scholars mate, people end up uh, just making it not happen, and then you end up getting to maybe end up taking. Uh, you know, a pawn here or there or something, you know? You get a little bit of an advantage with it. It's, it's not, it's definitely not, again, coming back to the habits that you don't want to learn. Queen's, uh, the, the Scholar's Mate is definitely one of those bad habits that you don't necessarily want to have. You don't want to think that that's something that can work. You know, if, when I play against uh, my family, I'll probably do it. You gotta, if, if somebody's playing chess for the first time, the scholar's mate has a has a pretty good success rate. You know, you uh, 
got you gotta try, right? Just crouch. You'll win I wasn't reload, I was out of ammo! <sighs> I would have won if it wasn't out of ammo. You gotta, you gotta try the scholar's mate against somebody who hasn't played before, right? Like you gotta you gotta go for it, you gotta do it. Everybody's gotta lose to it at least once, you know? It's like a four turn mate or something. It's good fun. It's good fun. Anyway, I'm tired. That's gonna do it for today, so thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you like, subscribe to see more of the future comment if you have anything to say. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.